So I just want to talk in brief about how the instrument does the measurements. So basically, you need to turn your sample into a solution, and you load your sample into the auto sampler. So we want to get this sample into the instrument. We do that by taking it up in this probe right here. This is then pumped into the instrument with this small pump. And it then goes into the nebulizer and it goes into a torch and a plasma. Uh, just so you know, the plasma is very, very hot. This isn't like organic mass spectrometry techniques. This plasma is so hot, it's depending on the part of the plasma, five to 10,000 degrees Celsius. So it's like the temperature of the surface of the sun, and it's very good at ripping electrons off of everything that goes in. So once you've made those, once you've ripped off an electron, you then have an ion. And an ion is a charged particle that you can then accelerate with a magnetic field. And it goes up into the instrument uh, until it reaches a detector. So I mentioned the plasma. This instrument actually has a camera, so you can see what the plasma looks like. And that's shown right here. So this is a, a load coil, and that's where all the energy is flowing. And then this is actually the plasma. This end here is actually the cone. There's a very small hole that is the inlet to the instrument. So let me talk a little bit about some of the different applications and also the way we work here. We try to encourage people to run their own samples whenever possible, and, uh, but, and we are happy to train people. So we always basically run kind of customized analyses for, for many of our users because we have a really wide variety of users. So we have people from School of Life Sciences, we have engineers, we also have people from anthropology, a lot of people from geology, from chemistry, who all want to measure metal and major element comp concentrations. So just as a couple of examples, uh, here's a list, here's the periodic table. And anywhere you see a small dot in the corner of one of the elements, these are things we can measure. So. We can't measure things like the noble gases. We can sometimes measure iodine, it's okay, but these are not great. We can't measure carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or hydrogen, but we can measure most of the rest of the periodic table. That just because we can measure everything doesn't mean that we can measure everything well in your samples. So it requires an understanding of a lot of the chemistry of your samples. So for instance, gold is not very stable in solution. It tends to drop out, so it requires very special precautions. Uh, there are a lot of interferences, and we know about a lot of them, but not all of them. Uh, and we have different relative sensitivities. So for instance, we're not measuring silica very well, uh, and that's because there are some gas interferences. But we can measure things, particularly trace elements, transition metal elements, rare earth elements, with very, very low detection limits. So often, uh, like uranium and things like that, we're often measuring parts per trillion or below. Uh, but that's in the solution that's measured. Often, if you bring a solid sample to us, we're going to have to actually digest it and dilute it in order to get it into a form the instrument will measure. So just because we can measure one part per trillion of something, that doesn't mean we can measure one part per trillion in that solid material. So you can work with lab staff and we will try to help you to figure out sample preparation methods uh, that will optimize for your samples. But as a few examples, um, this is one user who really wants a complete suite of what we can measure. So we measure a lot of things. Um, this is someone who is looking at mouse organs and how much gold was being transported by gold nanoparticles. So they only cared about gold. Uh, here's another user who had synthetic materials uh, and only cared about lithium, bismuth, and vanadium. So in these cases, we often created custom standards just for those users. 
uh, and we will optimize the sample preparation to do the best we can. Uh, we also have some kind of more canned methods, so like a general trace element suite for rocks or uh, plants or biological materials. And um, we also do, we do lots of rocks, so we have, for, we have different optimizations for carbonates versus shales uh, versus granites. But it's important for users to understand that a lot of the challenges come with sample preparation. Um, but we're happy to work with you and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.